Welcome to the video you've been wanting for a while now, the ultimate guide to Disney's deluxe resorts. Luxurious spa treatments, fine dining, private firework shows, and water parks in your backyard. It's pretty nice, but is it worth the massive price tag? Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Vlog. A major part of a Disney vacation is deciding which hotel is going to wind up being your home away from home. And Disney doesn't make this choice easy. With over 20 different Disney-owned resort options out there and three different price ranges, it can be tricky to narrow it down to just one. So why are so many people adamant about paying for the highest price resorts on property? That's what we're exploring today, those pros and cons. Disney's deluxe resorts essentially offer top-tier amenities for top-tier prices. So we're going to break down what those amenities are and how much you should expect to pay for them. Now, because we're going to be going over a whole lot of stuff today, we got it all typed out and ready to send your way if you want to look back at it on your own time and maybe even print out this list too, because I know some of you prefer physical copies of this stuff so you can highlight and mark away to your heart's content. To receive your own copy of today's list, send us your email at disneyfoodblog.com slash ultimate deluxe and we'll get that PDF sent to your inbox ASAP. Okay, let's start with some news. As you know, Disney World is pretty much changing everything right now. Building new rides, tearing down old rides, updating pools, closing restaurants, and doing some major construction at the hotels. If you haven't been to Disney World in a while, here's the latest you need to know when it comes to deluxe resorts. Several of the deluxe resort perks aren't what they used to be. Disney's merchandise pickup and delivery service, where you could get souvenirs that you bought at the park sent straight to your Disney hotel, has been MIA since the 2020 closures. So if you want to buy something while in the parks, remember you're going to have to carry that with you until you make the trek back to your hotel room. Now we have hopes that this hotel perk will return sometime in the future since Disneyland's merchandise pickup and delivery recently came back for the West Coast parks. But for now, merchandise and delivery is a no-go in Disney World. In-room dining is non-existent in the resorts currently too, except for one resort, which we'll talk about more later on. And as far as those extra magic hours are concerned, which have always granted you more time in the parks, they look a little different than they used to. Now, extra magic hours have been broken up into two separate benefits, early theme park entry and extended evening hours, which again, we'll get into the nitty gritty of both of those in just a little bit. What I will tell you now is that extended evening hours can work in your favor if you're trying to get in a virtual queue for one of the newest Disney World rides like Tron, Light Cycle Run, and Magic Kingdom opening on April 4th. And for the time being, Guardians of the Galaxy, Cosmic Rewind, and Epcot, which is open right now. For rides with virtual queues, you'll have two very limited windows of opportunity, one at 7 a.m., one at 1 p.m., to secure a boarding group number for your My Disney Experience app, giving you the chance to enter the attraction's virtual queue. But as a deluxe resort guest who has access to extended evening hours, you'll You'll have a third window of opportunity at 6 p.m., which may be the easiest option for guaranteeing your spot in the ride's virtual queue out of those three time frames. Also keep in mind that per the release of this video, some of these hotels do not look like they usually do. Resorts like Disney's Polynesian Village Resort, Disney's Boardwalk Inn, and Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa are undergoing some extreme makeovers at the moment. While Disney's Boardwalk Inn is getting ready to update their lobby and rooms, as well as add a brand new table service restaurant to the area, Disney's Grand Floridian is getting a new look in its lobby and rooms with added Mary Poppins theming throughout the decor. Disney's Polynesian Village Resort, on the other hand, is currently expanding expanding its offerings with a brand new DVC Villa building slated to open later in 2024. Expansions and remodels are always exciting, but outside inside construction work can kill that immersive resort vibe you are desperately wanting and paying for. So just keep checking back with us on our weekly latest news videos to make sure you know when these projects are starting to finish up or to overall get a clearer understanding of what you should expect when you visit later on. Okay, so that's the news happening around the deluxe resorts. Now it's time to dive into what they are. Well, the deluxe hotels are basically a choose your own adventure. Every Disney World hotel has its own distinct personality, but the deluxe resorts hit hard with that theming. So let's go on a speedy tour through them. Over in the Epcot area, you've got your choice of Disney's Boardwalk Inn, Disney's Yacht Club or Disney's Beach Club. The Boardwalk Inn drops you into that charming turn of the century Atlantic boardwalk theming, meaning you get a little bit of fanciness and a little bit of beachiness and a little bit of vintageness all wrapped up into one classy resort. Currently, the boardwalk is experiencing lots of renovations, including a lobby and room update, as well as an additional table service restaurant called the Cake Bake Shop, which is slated to open later in 2023. We got to interview the mastermind behind the Cake Bake Shop, Gwendolyn Rogers, not too terribly long ago. So if you'd like to read up on what 
what she's cooking up for the Boardwalk Resort, I'll go ahead and drop that link to her interview in the description. Disney's Yacht Club and Beach Club are two sides of the same coin. Often they're referred to in the same breath, simply as Disney's Yacht and Beach Club Resort. But they do have different styles to them. The Yacht Club is themed after the grand and sleek yachting clubs of New England, so expect it to have a more sophisticated vibe than the Beach Club, which is the more casual sibling of the two that's all about the sand and seashell and salty air vibes. Now, I don't know if any of you are parent trap fans out there, but I think the Yacht and Beach Club are a lot like Hallie and Annie. They look similar, but they're definitely not the same person. Disney's Riviera Resort isn't too terribly far away from the Epcot Resort Trio and is located directly on the Disney Skyliner route, which I'll talk about more later on. The Riviera is the newest Disney Vacation Club resort on property and the newest deluxe resort on property, with a theme directly inspired by Walt Disney and his wife Lillian's own travels along the French Riviera. In the Magic Kingdom area, you've got four different hotels to choose from, Wilderness Lodge, Contemporary Resort, Grand Floridian, and Disney's Polynesian Village Resort. Those are all the deluxes over there. Wilderness Lodge takes the rustic beauty of the Pacific Northwest and brings it right to the heart of Florida. It's a woodsy resort inspired by the classic lodges of America's national parks. Grand Floridian Resort and Spa is the most luxurious hotel of the deluxe hotel lineup. It's a fancy live-in hotel that transports you into the Victorian age of high tea, dressing for dinner, gloved hands with pinkies out. This place is so grandiose and luxurious that it's also the home of Disney's wedding pavilion, where you can get married to your soulmate in a white and gold chapel with a breathtaking view of Cinderella Castle. Contemporary Resort takes on a very modern tone, but it's hard to pinpoint any central theme aside from that. Its location, just to the right of the Magic Kingdom, was originally because there was going to be an entrance to Tomorrowland from the Contemporary Resort, which never ended up actually happening. Right now, it's upscale and sleek with a side of comfy casual and some incredible theming thrown into the mix. It's a hodgepodge for sure, but I can't help but love it and all its different offerings. And then there's the Polynesian Village Resort. This celebrates tiki culture, offers a nostalgic image of Pacific Island vacations, without necessarily being a literal representation of those environments. It's filled with dark woods, tribal symbols, and tropical flowers. And back in 2021, the rooms at the Polynesian were reimagined to take on a Moana-inspired ambiance. The changes provide a balance of classy island vibes while also incorporating beloved Disney characters. It's not too much, not too in your face, and it's a hit with both kids and adults alike. In the Animal Kingdom area, you've got one deluxe resort, but honestly, you only need one because Animal Kingdom Lodge hits it out of the park with its unique theming and offerings. What truly sets this resort apart from the others are the over 200 animals and birds that call the savannas of this hotel home. While the savannas alone are a big enough selling point as is, because who doesn't want to wake up and see giraffes outside their hotel window, the resort also presents one of the largest collections of African art in the United States. And last but not least, we've got the Disney Springs area resorts, Disney Saratoga Springs, Springs Resort and Spa, and Disney's Old Key West Resort, both of which are best known for their deluxe room offerings for Disney Vacation Club members. Saratoga Springs is the best resort for those who love that late 1800s upstate New York vibe, because I know there's a lot of you out there, back when horse racing was all the rage, and Old Key West specializes in having a lounge the day away in Florida atmosphere. You're not going to find a whole lot of in-your-face Disney characters and theming here, so it could be the perfect fit for those who want to visit the parks, but also want to break away from them to do some much-needed relaxing while on vacation. All right, you ready to talk about how much there is to do at the deluxe resorts? Because there is a lot. There have been several times that I've stayed at deluxe resorts and haven't even wanted to go to the parks because there was so much at the hotel I wanted to do. So that is another push-pull for you to think about is are you going to want to spend hundreds of dollars a night to stay at these deluxe resorts and not take advantage of everything there because you're in the parks all the time. So how many park tickets you buy is definitely a quandary when you stay at a deluxe resort, especially Animal Kingdom Lodge. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. You can easily fill an entire Disney day or more without ever having to leave your hotel when you're staying at a deluxe. One of the things each of them has in common is fully equipped fitness centers because everybody knows we need to pump some iron before your next park day. They've also got so many pools. You've got your feature pool, which will be the biggest, most well-themed pool of the resorts. Then you've got a few quieter private pools for those looking for a more relaxing dip during the day. Some of our favorite feature pools include the Boardwalk Inn's Luna Park Pool, which has that epic keister coaster water slide that was rethemed back in 2020 and no longer is a creepy nightmarish clown face. 
Polynesian's lava pool feels like a tropical hideaway surrounded by palm trees and tiki torches, and it's got a 142-foot volcano water slide. But the best pool of the bunch is the yacht and beach club pool, Storm Along Bay. This is practically a mini water park. It's got a lazy river, 230-foot-long water slide, three acres of water attractions, and a sand bottom pool. So if having a stellar resort pool is something you prioritize on your hotel stays, Yacht and Beach Club will definitely when you over. Now, if you want to feel like royalty during your pool day, you can book a cabana at one of the main pools located at Disney's Contemporary, Grand Floridian, and Yacht and Beach Club. These come with even more amenities, including comfy furniture, TVs, fruit baskets, snacks and drinks, and dedicated cast member service for all cabanas except the ones at Contemporary. But hey, the Contemporary's cabanas have Bluetooth speakers, which the other cabanas don't have, so trade-off. Now, Disney's Grand Floridian and Saratoga Springs get even more luxurious with their full service spas. Now that's a good thing to note though, not every deluxe resort has a full service spa. But at Grand Floridian in Saratoga, each spa has a wide range of services, including massages, massages for two, warm stone massages, botanical body treatments, facials, mani pedis. And these services do cost extra, ranging in price depending on what type of pampering you choose. Since we're already at Grand Floridian, let's also talk about what you could find at the Magic Kingdom area resorts once the sun goes down. Each night, Disney World's electrical water pageant takes place on the Seven Seas Lagoon and Bay Lake in Disney World. You can watch it from several locations around the Magic Kingdom resorts. The pageant's 15 minutes long and makes for a cute, shiny way to wrap up your Disney day. But just a heads up, the pageant's also quite loud. So if you've got a little kid and you're staying with a Bay Lake view at the Contemporary and they're already asleep by 8 o'clock, o'clock or 9 o'clock p.m. and then this water pageant goes by and it's super loud just a heads up you're gonna curse that thing believe me that's one of those little things that most people don't talk about but I unfortunately have had that experience and it was the worst now if you happen to be over at Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge by nightfall you can experience one of the most unique resort offerings of them all Animal Kingdom Lodge has the Starlight Safari it's an hour-long experience that takes you directly onto the resort's savannas in a guided safari vehicle during this tour, you're going to get to see 30 different species of animals up close with your very own pair of night vision goggles. Now, again, this is an extra cost that you'll need to book on the My Disney Experience app before your visit, but sometimes Animal Kingdom Lodge does offer free night vision goggle viewing. Just check the list of activities at your hotel when you get there. Now, each of the deluxe resorts also has a lot of recreational opportunities. We're gonna use Old Key West as an example. They've got bike and Surrey rentals, fishing, playgrounds, shuffleboard, basketball, tennis, volleyball, jogging trails, arcades, and a full-on community hall with foosball, billiards, ping pong, video games, and several other activities that could be a great way to kill time on a rainy day. Many of the deluxe resorts offer the same types of activities, and you can find exactly what each of them has by going to the Disney World website and checking the amenities and recreations tab for each resort's specific page. And don't forget to check out the daily activities available for your hotel too. Each resort has limited time crafts and creative classes that you might be able to swing by and experience during your resort day. Disney's Riviera, for instance, holds a painting on the Riviera course on select dates where you get to learn how to paint a Disney animated character in a professionally led art class. We've also seen Disney's Polynesian Village Resort have little on-the-go crafting opportunities like make your own kukui nut lei. Disney's Grand Floridian has put out button art for its guests to let their imaginations run wild. And several times on the weekends, Animal Kingdom Lodge will have stations where kids can build animal enrichment puzzle feeders for the wildlife on the savanna. And you just never know what might be available during your visit. You can always learn more about what's going to be there by tracking down your hotel's activity board inside the lobby or by asking a cast member at the front desk. They should have an activity sheet that's all updated for you. Now, I could do literally a whole video about activities at these resorts. There's so much going on, but we've got to move on to food because I'm hungry and I know you are too. Disney's deluxe resorts take their dining very seriously. I'd actually argue that I prefer many of the restaurants at the deluxe resorts over what you're gonna find inside the parks right now. So let's cover some of our favorite places to eat at the deluxe hotels. But just keep in mind, this isn't gonna cover everything. I'm not gonna just rattle off every single restaurant. Otherwise, again, this would take like an hour. That being said, we have full videos about these restaurants. So if you wanna learn more about every place to dine 
online around the Disney World resorts, make sure to check out our Disney Resort Restaurant three-part series where we go through and rate every dining option available. Like I said, there was no way we'd be able to fit them all in a single video. Otherwise, we'd have to sell your movie tickets. For now, we'll jump straight into the best signature dining options at the deluxe resorts first, since the deluxe resorts are the only Disney resort types that have these fancier high-end restaurants. So some of the best signature dining at these high-end resorts, Victoria and Albert's at Disney's Grand Floridian, that's one of the most exclusive dining experiences, not just in Disney World, but in Central Florida, period. During your meal, you'll be served by two dedicated cast members and treated to personalized menus with meal options that change to accommodate what's fresh in the season. There are three dining rooms you can choose from. The main dining room is available for only two seatings per evening and features the chef's tasting menu. That allows you to choose anywhere between eight and 12 courses. The Queen Victoria room is a slightly more elevated and private option. It only accommodates up to eight guests at a time, spread out over four tables of two. And the chef's table is the most high-end option of the bunch. This is an ultra-exclusive three-hour dining experience where your party is seated directly in the kitchen. The chefs that you'll interact with at the chef's table craft their very own degustation menu and feature all their fresh and rare ingredients depending on your group's tastes. But be warned, with great fanciness comes great price tags. Expect to pay at least a minimum of $295 per guest to dine there. Now, Jiko, the cooking place over at Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge, serves gourmet, African-inspired food in a tranquil atmosphere. It is truly beautiful, one of my favorite date night restaurants. While here, we tend to gravitate toward options like the filet mignon with macaroni and cheese, the braised short ribs, the bread service, and the seared scallops. California Grill at Disney's Contemporary Resort sits on the 15th floor of that hotel, making it the ultimate dinner with a view, since you'll be able to watch the Magic Kingdom fireworks from the restaurant's private balcony. Currently, the three-course prefix menu is inspired by Disney World's 50th anniversary celebration. But once those festivities come to an end on March 31st, California Grill is going to serve up a new three-course selection menu featuring contemporary market-inspired cuisine. For on-the-go options, the Artist's Palette at Disney's Saratoga Springs, they serve up counter service options for breakfast, lunch, and dinner in a setting with exposed brick walls and artistic glass light fixtures. This is also a pretty under-the-radar spot to find some creative and seasonal Disney cupcakes. Primo Piatto at Disney's Riviera Resort is a quick service trattoria serving up Italian and French inspired dishes like the Croque Monsieur, Croque Madame, Harissa Chicken Salad on a Pita. I guess that's not Italian or French. And Geyser Point Bar and Grill is located at Disney's Wilderness Lodge that blends two different dining styles together, table service and quick service, which means you got two different menus you can potentially order from. Geyser Point's featured cocktail list includes spirits from Northwest distilleries to keep up with the Northwest theming of the resort. You can also order hearty appetizers from the lounge menu, but those full service entrees will be available over at the connected counter service. And for lounges, because believe me, there are some incredible lounges in Disney's deluxe resorts. The Cruise Cup Lounge at Disney's Yacht Club is a great place to get a bite and a drink in a chill, cozy atmosphere. In addition to specialty cocktails and a full bar, a hearty food menu is served during evening hours as well, including a few full meals like the 14 ounce roasted prime rib and the lobster bisque. Trader Sam's Grog Grotto at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort isn't exactly what I'd call a relaxing lounge, but it is very fun. Grog Grotto is a 51-seat bar with interactive elements and special effects like active volcanoes, zombie invasions, and angered tiki gods. And they're triggered when you order certain cocktails, so it's super fun to see what yours is going to do. Until 8 p.m., this restaurant is available for the whole family to enjoy, but after the clock strikes 8, only 21 and over are allowed here. This spot is extremely popular, so you're definitely going to want to get here early to get a spot on the waiting list, like around 2.30 p.m. early since the bar opens at 3. But if you want a lounge that's pretty much always a walk-up with much more chill vibes, you can hit up Trader Sam's Tiki Terrace instead, which is right outside. It's the outdoor version of this bar with the same drinks and snacks minus the zombie invasions. And the Enchanted Rose at Disney's Grand Floridian. This is a lounge inspired by the live action version of Beauty and the Beast. It's very subtle and gorgeous. Here you're gonna find a signature glowing bar with a golden chandelier reminiscent of Belle's gown, a Cogsworth inspired clock, Lumiere inspired candelabra, Mrs. Potts is there too, and so many other Easter eggs straight from the film. You can try gourmet bites like crab macaroni and cheese and truffle fries, alongside featured martinis and classic grand cocktails. 
Now, how about character dining, right? Topolino's Terrace, located at Disney's Riviera Resort, that's a rooftop restaurant that features a signature meal experience for dinner, complete with a fireworks view, and a prefix character meal for breakfast. Prepare to meet Minnie, Mickey, Donald, and Daisy in their art-inspired costumes unique to Topolino's, while you dine on options like quiche gruyere and smoked salmon, and don't forget those waffles as well. Artist Point, storybook dining with Snow White at Disney's Wilderness Lodge is a prefix dinner set in an enchanted forest where guests can meet Snow White, Dopey, and Grumpy as they dine on fairy tale inspired menu options that are truly delicious. And believe me, I don't say that about every um, character meal because <laughs> a lot of it's not delicious. But the super fun addition here is you also get to meet the evil queen who is of course the best villain of the Disney universe and uh, I will be taking no questions and she's there for a rare photo opportunity. Now Chef Mickey's at Disney's Contemporary Resort is an all you care to enjoy restaurant restaurant where you can meet every single one of the Fab Five, Mickey, Minnie, Donald, Goofy, and Pluto. Though the food isn't by any means our favorite over here, the big draw is the character interactions that go beyond your traditional meet and greets and invite kiddos to the middle of the dining room for games and parades and sing-alongs. Is Chef Mickey's my favorite character meal? No, I think there were much better character meals elsewhere that are a little bit calmer and are less expensive. But if you happen to be heading to the Magic Kingdom that day, this is within walking distance of the Magic Kingdom. And for more casual table service offerings, try out Beaches and Cream at Disney's Beach Club Resort. This is the place to go for classic diner eats and gigantic ice cream sundaes in Disney World. Though the sundaes and shakes here are sizable no matter what you order, Beaches and Cream is well known for being home to the famous kitchen sink. This is an eight scoop ice cream sundae made for sharing with the whole group, served with every topping available in the house and a whole can of whipped cream. Ohana at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort is a Disney restaurant known for its churrascaria type service for dinner. The prefix Ohana Dinner Skillet features wood-fired grilled teriyaki beef, spicy peel and eat shrimp, and grilled chicken with Polynesian inspired chimichurri sauce. Side dishes include stir fried vegetables, fried dumplings, and the love of our life, the Ohana noodles, and a salad starter. Dessert also claims my heart with that phenomenal bread pudding that gives me hope for the future, just generally speaking. And if you come here for breakfast, you'll get to meet Lilo, Stitch, Mickey, and other Disney pals, usually Pluto, all dressed up in their Hawaiian finest for the best friend's breakfast. Steakhouse 71 at Disney's Contemporary Resort offers casual dining for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, with varying menus for each meal and a steakhouse focus in the evenings. Some of our favorite eats and drinks here include the French onion soup, the bacon and eggs, Steakhouse 71 stack burger, tequila sunrise for two, and the roasted prime rib. Sanaa at Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge serves a fusion of African and Indian cuisines made with authentic cooking methods like slow roasting and tandoori oven cooking. Though we love the food here, another big selling point of this one is the view. During your meal, you can see the ever-changing scenery of the resort's savanna, which is why we recommend coming earlier in the day when the sun is still up. If you go at night, you're just going to see your reflection in the windows. You're not going to see the animals. And Olivia's Cafe at Disney's Old Key West Resort, that's a beachy, breezy, casual restaurant where you can order classic classic American fare, and stuff inspired by the Florida Keys, like the shrimp fritters, the Duval Street Burger, and the Key Lime Tart, which is absolutely incredible. You can also order brunch options, like the Banana Bread French Toast, on the daily. Again, this is only a sample of all the different restaurants you can experience, not just at the deluxe resorts, but at Disney World, period. If you want to learn more about what's available on property, you can always turn to our brand new 2023 DFB Guide to Walt Disney World Dining for full reviews, recommendations, and tips for every single restaurant on site. And that's no exaggeration. We literally talk about them all. Just make sure to type in the code YouTube for a discount on your guidebook purchase. Head over to dfbstore.com to buy. Now, let's take the bougie factor up by just a few notches, because when these resorts say they have deluxe amenities, they mean deluxe amenities. First off, let's talk room service again. Ever since the 2020 closures, we've been missing a few elements from our usual resort offerings, and one of those is room service. Disney's Grand Floridian Resort does still offer private dining to its guests, meaning you can order a meal and have it delivered to the comfort of your room, jammies and all. And while it currently isn't at any other resorts at the moment, this option could return to the other deluxe resorts at a later date. After all, we've already seen full housekeeping services return to these hotels after having a couple of years with modified housekeeping only, so it might only be a matter of time till we hear more about private dining opportunities to come. Either way, we'll definitely keep you in the loop. 
Another big benefit for staying at a deluxe resort is the fact that you can actually get more hours to spend inside the parks. So we talked about this a little bit earlier, but here's the details. The early theme park entry perk allows you to enter any of the parks on any day 30 minutes before everyone else, giving you the chance to get ahead of the crowds for those heavy hitter rides. But this isn't a special perk for the deluxe resorts only. This is a perk offered for any of the Disney-owned hotels and a few of the good neighbor hotels that Disney partners with. The actual deluxe-only park perk is the extended evening hours benefit, and that allows you to stay in select parks on select nights after the parks close for everyone else. And that means you'll be able to get those last-minute night rides on some of the most popular attractions, minus being shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder with so many other guests. Extended evening hours aren't available every night, but when they are available, we usually see Epcot's happen on Mondays, Magic Kingdom's happen on Tuesdays or Wednesdays, and Disney's Hollywood Studios happen on Thursdays. Always check the Disney World Park Hours calendar online to make sure the days you're planning on visiting are going to align with these extended evening perks, because if you're going to be investing all that money in a deluxe resort, then you need to use every benefit you can. Now, as tempting as it may be to just lounge your vacation away at your hotel, we all know why you're really there. You're going to get some of that theme park action, and some of the deluxe resorts have super convenient means of getting to the parks using Disney's complimentary transportation services, or even your own two feet, which is a big reason for staying at these hotels. Disney's Polynesian Village Resort, Contemporary, and Grand Floridian are all located on the monorail loop. Now, the monorail brings Magic Kingdom area hotel guests straight to the Magic Kingdom gates. It'll also stop of the Transportation and Ticket Center, known as the Monorail's main hub, which can transfer you over to the Abcot Monorail as well. That way you can ride over to that park too. But if the lines for the monorail are looking a bit too busy for your liking, especially at the very beginning or very end of the day, you may just want to walk over to the Magic Kingdom instead. The monorail resorts are all close enough that you can take one of the many paths straight over to the Magic Kingdom's main gate and skip the transportation entirely. Just keep in mind that these strolls from your resort into the park and vice versa will probably take about 15 to 30 minutes one way. Unfortunately, not every Magic Kingdom area deluxe resort is within walking distance to the park. Disney's Wilderness Lodge has its name for a reason. It's in the woods, y'all, meaning it's still quite a ways away from Magic Kingdom's main gate. Wilderness Lodge is also not on the monorail Loop. However, instead of taking one of the buses over to the park, you can choose to take a boat across the Seven Seas Lagoon instead, which makes for a more fun ride, especially if it's nice out. Boat transportation to Magic Kingdom is also available for the monorail resorts, meaning you're going to have options. Lots of options. You can probably tell which park the Epcot area resorts are closest to, eh? I'll give you three guesses and the first two don't count. Disney's Boardwalk Inn and Disney's Yacht and Beach Club are all just a few steps away from Epcot's International Gateway, aka the back entrance of the park. But surprise, these hotels are also within walking distance to Hollywood Studios. The distance to get to studios from these resorts is still a good little walk, about 20 to 30 minutes one way. But if you'd rather save some time traveling over there, the Epcot Skyliner Station is at your disposal. Disposal. Not only will you be able to transport over to Hollywood Studios, but you can also visit some of the other resorts located on the Skyliner route too, including the Riviera. Don't want to walk or use the Skyliner from your Epcot area resort? How about taking a boat instead? The Friendship Boats travel to and from Epcot and Disney's Hollywood Studios for guests staying at Boardwalk and Yacht and Beach Club and the Swan and Dolphin, which we're going to talk about in a little bit here. And speaking of boats, if you're staying at Disney's Saratoga Springs or Disney's Old Key West, then you can take one of their watercraft directly over to to Disney Springs. But sadly, you'll have to rely on bus transportation to get you to the actual parks. Bus transportation isn't bad, and we're glad it's available for all the resorts for free, but it just takes more time out of your day to use. They're kind of slow. So make sure to factor in all that extra travel time into your schedule if you plan on relying on the bus services daily. As much as we love Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge, its transportation offerings leave something to be desired. Because this hotel is so close to Disney's Animal Kingdom, you're not going to have that access to the Skyliner or Monorail or boats, so you'll be bussing it all day, every day. That being said, if the buses are going a little too slowly for you and you need to make it over to your dining reservation ASAP, you can always order a ride share to come pick you up at your resort for an extra cost. Or you can rely on your own mode of transportation if you happen to have driven to Disney World this trip. Sometimes having complete control over how you get from place to place and when you get from place to place could be preferable over relying on someone or something to get you there instead. It might be even more tempting to take your car to Disney World now since the resort parking fees were dropped 
dropped earlier this year. Now guests staying on property are allowed to park their cars at the resort they're staying at free of charge. Okay, are you ready to talk about how to get a deluxe resort for less? Here we go. Everything was sounding all nice and magical, and now we're going to have to sit down and have a reality check talk with you. Because deluxe resorts are really, really expensive. There are ways to save on these different room types, which I'll sprinkle in during this point, but keep in mind that prices range depending on what time of year you visit and how many guests are going to be in your party. For these examples, we'll be looking at room prices for a four-night stay during the middle of June for a family of four, two adults, two kids. So let's talk room types. The first and cheapest room is going to be what Disney refers to as their standard room. These rooms are still going to be pretty swanky, but also give you a basic amount of space, usually sleeping up to four to five guests, depending on if the room has an additional sleep or sofa. At Disney's Grand Floridian, these standard rooms and their outer buildings will still give you an additional patio or balcony, and normally they're priced around, brace yourself, $770 per night. However, because of the spring and early summer deal currently featured on Disney World's special offers, deals, and discounts page, you could end up knocking that price down an extra 25%, making it $200 cheaper per night. $570 a night, still super expensive, but it ain't $770. Because Disney's Wilderness Lodge is a little more out of the way and doesn't have access to the monorail, expect that standard room price to be cheaper. The rooms at Wilderness Lodge and Animal Kingdom Lodge are a little bit smaller. I like to call them Deluxe Resort Light. You can get a standard room here with a courtyard view for around $560 per night or $420 with the spring summer discount. Now, if you want your stay to be a little less standard, you can always go the deluxe studio route. Now, these are Disney Vacation Club rooms, but they can be booked by non DVC members too. So, if you're staying at a resort hotel that has a DVC building, you'll find deluxe studios there. Now, these may have more amenities, they may have just a tiny bit more space. They've usually got a little tiny kitchenette, a private porch or balcony and a small refrigerator, but all the rooms have those. There could be different amenities depending on which deluxe studio you choose. One at Disney's Riviera Resort is gonna cost you around $680 per night, but if you wanted to select a deluxe studio with a preferred view, you'd be raising that price up to around $740. Wildly enough, you can get a deluxe studio for more moderate price right now at Saratoga Springs. Deluxe studios over here normally cost around $460, which is still only $40 more per night compared to Wilderness Lodge's standard room at a discounted rate. But if you use that spring and summer discount, this can be your home away from home for $340 per night, making it more around a moderate resort price range instead of a deluxe one. But remember, Saratoga Springs is buses all the way to the parks. You can also save money on DVC rooms by booking through a reliable third-party rental site instead of directly through the Disney World website. If you're not familiar with how DVC memberships work, that's a whole other complicated subject for a different day. Don't worry, we got a YouTube video on it. For now, think of it as Disney's timeshare program, where members are allotted a certain amount of vacation points each year, and they can spend that toward their preferred Disney resort. Third-party DVC rental sites, like our friends at David's DVC Rentals, they help those timeshare owners rent out their vacation points that they're not going to be able to use before they expire. So that means you and I can get more expensive rooms at a less expensive price. So check out our Disney World Hotel secret that could save you hundreds video right after this for all the details on that. But for now, let's move on up to the super VIP club level rooms. Deluxe resorts also have several club level rooms or sometimes known as concierge level rooms. The biggest reason to book a club level room is for exclusive access to the resort's private club lounge. There you're gonna find complimentary coffee, breakfast, evening snacks, drinks, and desserts served throughout the day. At Disney's Boardwalk Inn, you can get a standard room with club level access to the innkeeper's club for up to $900 per night. No discounts here, those discounted rooms seem to be already sold out. And speaking of sold out, the Contemporaries Club level rooms, which will get you into the recently remodeled Atrium Club, is completely sold out for the month of June, which goes to show you just how popular these room types are. Normally, Contemporary's club level prices range between $990 and $1550 per night. Shocked? Don't let your jaw drop yet. There are higher prices to come. There's the one to three bedroom villa offerings, which really do feel like a home away from home since they've got so much space for you and your group to spread out. Lots of bathrooms, fully equipped kitchens, washer dryer. Normally a one bedroom villa at Old Key West is gonna cost you around 620 per night, which is not terrible. But remember, Old Key West is an older resort and you got a bus everywhere. But by using the spring and summer discount, you can knock that villa price even further down to 460 per night. On the 
opposite side, sometimes those villas can be outrageously expensive though, especially ones with the really cool theming that are very close to parks. The bungalows at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort are incredibly luxurious with their private deck and plunge pool, two bedrooms, and their location, which is right above the Seven Seas Lagoon, just across from Magic Kingdom. Bungalows are already booked solid for the summer since these tend to fill up almost a year or so in advance, but when they are available, they'll range between three and $5,000 per night. Like I said, you're gonna have to save the big bucks if a deluxe resort is something you and your group have your heart set on, but the price can be more manageable if you're splitting it between multiple people or if you're able to use one of those third-party DVC rental companies to help you lower that price. And don't forget the special offers, deals, and discounts page. It really does make a world of difference. Deluxe resorts are still expensive, but if you can get 25% off, you absolutely should. And don't forget to check on those potential savings opportunities before making a decision one way or another to see if any of those discounts is gonna be applicable for your upcoming trip. Now, I've got another thing to say about Disney's Deluxe Resorts, and it might just be the most crucial bit of information yet. If you're booking a room and you notice one of your options says Theme Park View, that means you're gonna have a room with a balcony that'll look directly out at Magic Kingdom, and that means you'll be able to watch the fireworks out of your window every single night. These premium views will often cost an extra $100 to $200 per night on top of what you're already paying for your standard deluxe room. Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge has a similar room perk, only instead of of a theme park view, you're going to have a savanna view, meaning you'll get to wake up every morning, walk out onto your balcony and see giraffes and elk and other unique wildlife zebras with your morning cup of coffee. Like the theme park views at Magic Kingdom area resorts, savanna views are also going to cost you a pretty penny for such a mind-blowing upgrade. However, you might be able to skip that extra cost entirely by requesting a partial savanna view for your standard room. More often than not, Disney will do its best to accommodate your request and you'll still get a great view because partial view just means they'll be some buildings or some architecture in the view too, but you'll still get to see a ton of animals. This isn't a guarantee, but you might luck out with a nice view for less. Just make sure to put in your request right after you book by going to the Disney World website under your My Disney Experience account. From there, click on the My Reservations and Tickets tab, select the Update Check-In, and add requests to the More Details link. You can also call the resort and have them note your request right there in your room reservation. But remember, you may not be able to get the partial view and just go ahead and stick with the standard view. Now, I've got a few more weird things you should know about deluxe hotels. They may seem like a pretty straightforward concept. You spend more, you get more, but they're actually more complex than maybe it looks like. So let's check out the most bizarre parts of deluxe resorts that you may not have realized were actually a thing. First, some deluxe resorts are harder to book than others. Saratoga Springs and Old Key West always seem to be available and ready for you to book. But resorts like the Contemporary and Polynesian Village have to be booked months in advance since they're pretty hot spots to stay. And of course, a lot of this has to do with location, 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 as well as theming. Though Saratoga Springs and Old Key West may not be the most exciting resorts of the bunch, and they may be placed farther away from the parks, they are gonna be quieter, more affordable, and maybe even more spacious, depending on what room type you choose, because Old Key West is the original DVC resort, and those rooms are much bigger than the rooms that followed them in other DVC resorts. Number two, Riviera Resort is strangely expensive for what it is. Not to bash Riviera, cause it's a beautiful DVC resort, but the top dollar you're paying for those rooms here, especially if you're not a DVC member using your points, just don't add up. First of all, one of the smallest rooms you can get on property is a tower studio room here, which can range in price between $400 and $700 per night. And those rooms, you don't even get a couch and a bed. You get a couch bed that you have to choose which one you want and when you want it. And because the bed folds out from the wall on top of the couch, it seems like a rather steep price point to pay for such little space. But maybe it's trying to make us reminisce about maybe your teeny tiny apartment in Paris? I don't know. Maybe that's what it's trying to make us think of. Maybe that's the theme. I've never had a, an apartment in Paris, tiny or otherwise. So I don't know. And not to mention the Riviera is the most expensive resort on the Skyliner route. So if you were wanting to solely use the Skyliner system, you could just as easily pick Caribbean Beach or Pop Century or Art of Animation and pay potentially hundreds of dollars less per night. It's not like you can walk to any of the parks from Riviera. So really the only benefit is the Skyliner, which you can get at value resorts so it's very very intriguing that that is such an expensive hotel okay number three you can still visit deluxe resorts without staying at them yep that's the real pro 
prize winner tip here. If you're listening to me talk about how pretty these hotels are, how awesome the restaurants are, how fun some of the activities can be, you can still do them and experience them even if you're not planning on staying there. You just won't get those deluxe resort guest benefits or be able to swim in the pools. But if you want to be pampered at a salon, take a painting class, eat a nice meal, you can still make reservations to do any of those things, deluxe guest or not. After all, if you're willing to pay for those things, Disney's not going to deny your money. Then number four, Walt Disney World's Swan and Dolphin Hotels can give you the best of both worlds. A couple of hotels we didn't talk about today, but still deserve your attention. The Swan and Dolphin and the brand new Swan Reserve. So these hotels are owned and operated by Marriott instead of Disney, but they are right on property within walking distance of Hollywood Studios and Epcot. They still partner with Disney to provide guests with all of those deluxe perks. Yes, that includes extended evening hours at a normally much cheaper price point. And bonus, if you're a Marriott Bonvoy member, which is that loyalty club that they have that's free to sign up for, you can save more money on your Swan and Dolphin stay by using your points you've racked up from staying at other Marriott resorts. Maybe if you're staying other places for work or whatever, you can use those points here. And that could potentially knock the price of your stay down by a lot. These hotels have incredible restaurants. The rooms are lovely. It is a deluxe resort stay without the cost. So definitely consider those because again, you're paying $700 to stay in a teeny tiny room at the Riviera when you could instead pay $250 to stay at a decently sized room at the Swan and Dolphin and have walking distance to Hollywood Studios and Epcot. That's a no brainer to me. Booking a deluxe resort is a big decision with plenty of pros and cons you're going to need to discuss with your group before sealing that deal one way or another. But if you want to look back at all the different things we covered today, don't forget to drop us your email at disneyfoodblog.com slash ultimate deluxe for that full PDF that you'll be able to refer back to whenever you need it. And keep checking back here with us as we continue to explore not just deluxe resorts, but all the Disney World hotels and their latest updates. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and do so. We've got five videos a week, and they're all filled with great information about your Disney World trip. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.